put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Recall Moon Review. Douglas Quaid has basically a decent enough life. He's ripped and he has a really hot wife who clearly loves him. But still, he is only a construction worker and well, he wants more out of life, you know, he wants to be somebody, but it doesn't really seem like he can really accomplish that. So he goes to Recall, a company which specializes in making you think that you've done something or been somewhere. They implant memories into your brain and give you proof that they actually, you know, that, that these memories are real and you won't know that it's not real. So, given that he's been having these dreams about Mars, granted, he, they, they are a rather violent, gruesome nature, so why exactly it makes him want to go there, you might be wondering, but Anyway, he goes to recall and asks, you know, to, to have memories of a trip to Mars. But something goes wrong and soon he is being hunted down and he finds himself involved in this uprising on Mars. And that's really all I'm gonna give away of the plot. Whilst this is a very, very loose adaptation of the Philip K. Dick story, We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, I have no idea why they didn't keep the original title, it does capture sort of the essence, the one of one of Philip K. Dick's favorite themes, the line between fantasy and reality. And how can we be sure that what we think is real is actually real? The way it does this is by consistently disproving what we think is is real. The movie continues to, you know, consistently seduces us into thinking that something is real and then, you know, completely pulls the carpet out from underneath us and reveals the exact opposite might actually be true. It, it really creates this very strong sense of both paranoia and just that, you know, you, you really it, it's a really good thing to have in an action movie, to not be able to just sit still and just take it, you know, you never know what's going to happen next. And that's a fantastic quality, really for any story, but maybe especially something like the action, that particular genre. And this is a fantastic action movie, you know. It... I should perhaps talk a little bit about it's. It's not only an action movie, so, so to say, so to speak. Paul Verhoeven, who directed this, really understands what makes a good action movie, and when you really understand something, you're in a great position to make fun of it, because you know exactly sort of what its weak spots are. And, and, and that's really, 
you know, the best parodies and the best satires are always when the, you know, the comedian actually understands the subject. That always makes for the best comedy. And so, this is also part satire of action movies. And again, that's where this, you know, is this real kind of thing comes in, where you have this really obvious action flick cliché, and literally a character will say, do you really think this is real? Come on, this only happens in the movies, you know. It's a great sort of meta thing, but, you know, and the movie has a lot of fun with that. The, as an action movie, it is pretty much an Arnie flick, you know, and one of the really, really good ones. There are a lot of Arnie flicks which are kind of guilty pleasures. They're really bad movies, but man, are they fun. This and Terminator, well, both Terminator movies, shut up, there are only two, are examples of actually good Arnie flicks. You know, Arnie gets to do his thing, and it's actually a good movie. The... Re returning briefly to Paul Verhoeven, this Paul, unlike the W.S. Anderson, understands that, you know, you can't just constantly hit us, hit the audience hard with action. You have to, you know, actually give the audience time to breathe every so often. To be fair, Anderson, you know, a lot of current action directors don't understand that. I don't have to be fair to Anderson. He's got Mila to go cry to. Anyway, and the movie uses this really well because Pretty much each time the movie actually slows down, which is not to say that it's ever boring, but any time it gives you air to breathe, sorry, pun not intended, I swear, people who've seen the movie will get that, you know, every time you get to breathe in this, not long after, literally, something will blow up, and suddenly there's an action scene going again, you know, and... Yeah, it, it, that's a really effective way to do action. It's a really fun action movie, you know. The Paul Verhoeven tends to do really good action. We've got chases, we've got fist fights. Again, it really plays the Arnie's strengths. You know, this doesn't... It, it has him as just basically really strong and an effective fighter, but not expecting him to be able to do... You know, he's not Van Damme. He's not a martial artist. He's a big, brawny guy. So when he punches someone, you believe that it hurts. And yeah, the movie uses that, you know. Actually, I should talk a little bit about how the action is shot and edited. It's very up close and personal at times getting really violent. You know, another thing Verhoeven does a lot. Very d gruesome violence. And, yeah, you know, when, whenever someone gets hit either by a bullet or a fist, you feel it. It's like, oh, that, that hurt. I know that hurt. I can tell. You know, and it really makes it very intense and sort of very personal. The it's it's got great characterization, you know. Basically, everyone you you know who everyone is, or you, you get to know who they are, and you believe that this person could basically exist, or at least when you don't believe it, that's kind of part of the thing of you know, oh, this is just an action movie, you know, the the meta thing I mentioned earlier. You know, we've got. Arnie himself sort of playing his usual badass self, but they mix in some innocence there, which really helps to... Well, I, I shouldn't reveal why that's necessary, but it's, it's important and it really works well. He's surprisingly good at playing sympathetic. You know, you might not think that for, you know, having played the Terminator and stuff like that. You know, we've got Sharon Stone, very convincing, as this, you know, very devoted wife, and 
yes, she's hot as well, you know. The... I do not remember what the other female big role is, what her actual name is, but she's also great. The... Yeah, I, I really shouldn't talk too much about her character, but now that I mentioned them both, though, this is a pretty good movie for female characters, you know, the, 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 these two major female characters, both strong female roles, both really contribute and really, you know, stand out and both really hold their own, you know, in, I, I won't give away any details, but some of the action scenes incorporate at least one of these women, and they hold their own. It's not like Arnie has to go save the damsel in distress. No, the damsel, the woman, is going to kick some ass and take some names herself. The, you know, we have Michael Ironside as a fantastic right-hand man, sort of. He's really obsessive and intense, and really, that's Michael Ironside at his best, you know, and you just really feel that, you know, he just really... You feel like if he actually gets his hands on Quaid, he's going to rip his throat out, you know. Possibly with his teeth. And I'm not really giving anything away by saying that Ronnie Cox is the villain, and man, that guy is delicious as the villain. You know, when is that ever not the case? I'm not sure he's actually the villain in that many movies, but when you see him as the villain in a movie, you remember that he was the villain in that movie. I think that pretty much covers the characters. There's another guy, I really don't know the actor's name, but the, the character's name is Benny, he's this cab driver. He's basically the comic relief, but you actually like the guy, and here's the kicker, he's actually funny. You know, there are so many movies where the comic relief is just obnoxious, but here, he's actually quite funny, and in general, it's, you know, the humor in the film really works. And it knows when to, you know, sort of how to play it. You know, the the jokes really work. The movie has some goofy moments, and it certainly is over the top at points. Again, you know, action flick and army flick, especially. The sci-fi elements are actually quite clever, and it's rather intelligently structured. I urge anyone who enjoys you know, looking at plotting and the like to, you know, pick this one apart and, and really see how all the, you know, different elements go together and the whole thing, you know, think about what did you know about what was happening at that point and so on and so forth. It's, it's a really, really well-written movie. We have some usual, you know, again with an Arnie flick, we have some one-liners. The dialogue in general is quite good. It keeps to a very nice pace. I already mentioned that you're never bored, and it you know it keeps the plot moving very nicely. You know there there are a lot of action scenes, and you know they take up a lot of the movie's running time, but there's still you know plot, and it never feels like the the movie's standing still or anything. The effects are fantastic. That's another Verhoeven quality that you can usually count on. You know, his movies are usually sexy, with some great action, you know, quite good stories, and the effects are fantastic. This is a guy who really understands, I, I suppose what you could say is the one critical thing to always keep in mind about effects. If they, you know, only show what actually looks real. If it doesn't look real, don't show it. Or show so little of it that we don't notice that it doesn't look real. Then cut to a reaction shot or something. You know, the, this is how you make it work. I mean, this movie's from 1990. I defy anyone to find, yeah, really any effect in this that doesn't look convincing and that, you know, there, there's nothing that is, yeah, 
Now, part of this is that this was done, the, the effects were done by Rob Bottin, and that man knows how to do, you know, he also did the thing from 1982, you know, enough said. The, yeah, he's awesome. And not only because he makes fantastic effects. But yeah, you know, you have practical effects, you have fantastic makeup effects. You know, one of the sort of story elements is that, I, I won't really say why, but there are a number of mutants on Mars, and just the way they, they look is really very impressive, very creative, very creative designs. But yeah, you know, you have practical effects, makeup effects, early sort of, I'm pretty sure at least some of this must have been animated, and yeah, it, it looks fantastic, you know. I suppose that more or less covers it. The movie's one hour and 45 minutes total, not counting the end credits, and as is the case with some other movies, the first half is the better half. But really, the second half is still really, really good. Yeah, I believe that quite covers it, so yeah. You probably have already watched this movie. If not, what are you doing? Go watch it right away. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.